Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to Pure Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. You know, there are certain verses in the Word that challenge me. And one of them is spoken to the Church of Philadelphia, which I believe represents the true church of this hour. In it, Jesus says, you have little power. Now, I know that the Lord God is still the same mighty God. I know the Holy Spirit is still the mighty Holy Spirit who can do the same mighty works that He did in the early church. So what has gone wrong? And we have to look and recognize the problem is not with a change in the Lord, but with us. And looking at the early church, they had a greater understanding of a prayer life. They had been trained and developed in certain ways of prayer time. And you'll see that in the Word they continued to have those prayer times where they sought the Lord. They gave priority to their prayer life. And they were not concerned about whether or not they offended the hour or the generation, even if it came at great cost. Today the church is under so much pressure and the church walks and acts and talks just like the world. Because we don't want to offend the world, there's so much censorship, there's so much politics, there's this cancel culture, there's so many things aimed at the church, and to make a stand for the truths of the word will come at an incredible cost. We have to understand who we are as the church, and that now more than ever, the world needs the church to arise and shine. And that means that as individuals, we need to understand who we are and come back till we walk under His authority. Join with me as I share what I know is a powerful message that if you get a hold of it, will enable you to walk with real authority in your life and see great breakthroughs. So Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We come boldly <clears throat> before your throne because we just so love in you. And I ask you, mighty Holy Spirit, come and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And open the word and bring forth such revelation that builds and edifies and encourages and brings us to the place, God, where we're the church that you so desire us to be. Bless each person. And Father God, let not one person leave the same, but let them be truly touched, edified, and that every need would be met in the mighty, glorious name of Jesus, I pray. And the church said, Amen. We've lost sight of who we are. If you go to John chapter 17, we call it the high priest prayer, where Jesus, after the Last Supper, knowing what he's about to face, makes this incredible prayer, and in it shares such powerful revelation and I think that we've lost sight of it. In chapter 17 of John, verses 20 through 24, it reads, I do not pray for these alone, but for those who believe in me through their word. That's you and I. We stand here today because of the message they preached. Aren't you grateful that Jesus looked into the future and so that what he's saying right now applied not just to the early church, not just to the disciples in that room, but to us as well. And he says, that they may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and you have loved me uh, as you, sorry, you've loved them just as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you've given me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. There's so much. And in it we have a promise there's coming a day where we will one day finally stand in His presence and be where He is. But while we're on this earth, 
We are to walk in such a place where we are found in Him, individually and as a church. Our life is to be so found in the secret place where there's such an intimacy with Him that you cannot separate us from Jesus. You cannot separate the church from the Holy Spirit. They are so intertwined, so connected. We think of ourselves as somehow an island. And we're on our own trying to do it in some kind of hybrid, half of God and half of ourselves, where we are meant to come to this reckless abandon of the old. So there's nothing of us but in this place where we find ourselves in the secret place we are made. And I pray you get a hold of what I'm about to say. We are going to show you today how God wants to so take you and in the secret place make you. In that place as you come under his authority, the real you comes forth. And it's the real you when you understand who he is. Everything that he did on the cross and how it applies to you personally. And then as a consequence, who you are in him. And this, on this earth, it's not about all your natural strengths, your natural abilities, but it's who you are in Him. And I stand before you. In Him, I am anointed and called as a pastor. I'm called as a teacher. I'm called as a father. I'm called as a husband. And I can look at all the things in this life that He has so called me in Him. And therefore, in Him, I report to Him. And in Him, I can stand. And in Him, I have an authority. I have an authority with an expectation. Go to 1 Kings and in chapter 18, powerful chapter, where we're going to discover the mighty prophet Elijah. It's a difficult time in the nation of Israel, much like today, where you have this great darkness on the people because of the leadership. And today we know, of course, there's elites that try to control the world. And we are in a dark, difficult hour. Yet it's in the midst of this that Isaiah 60 speaks and calls us to arise and shine. When we look at how all the things that we're standing for, our children will be brought back. If we look at Isaiah 60, the key is for us to arise and shine. And to arise and shine means to come into the secret place and there to be made and there to rise up and be that which he says you are. To claim that which he says is yours. To do that for which he sent you to do. In the secret place. Not out doing the things that I want to do. We live in an hour where there's so many people that walk in such self-hatred. That they don't want to do anything seen in public. Why? Because they see all the imperfections in themselves. And they're so hating themselves. And they either deflate themselves or they puff themselves up to make themselves be something to cover those imperfections. There are many people who claim great positions of honor, apostles, prophets, etc. Because they want to be listened to. Some are, and I'm not saying they're not, but many are not. Many are simply trying to cover an issue that is not being addressed in the secret place. Because we can only walk in the authority of the call of heaven. So I look at Elijah in this chapter where Ahab and Jezebel have so taken a nation, taken a people, captivated them and held them in fear, uh, led them in a lie, and they believed it. And the people are following it to, for it. They're worshiping Baal. They're not worshiping the true God. And in the midst of this dark hour, Elijah arises. Now, we see that Obadiah, who was a prophet and the head of Ahab's house, hides the prophets because why? Uh, Jezebel wants to kill them. It's not a good time. And as we read, we also discover that Elijah is the most wanted man in the nation. I say that because looking and seeing what is on the horizon, the church 
is about to experience incredible persecution. And many people are feeling that pressure, the political pressure, the other pressures, being applied to the church. And so we start to mold ourselves like the world, not wanting to offend the world, but we're okay with offending God. And we have to be like Elijah, recognizing who we are and stop bowing to the pressure of the enemy. Now, if you will go, let me just get the verse for you. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 7 through 8. Now, Elijah meets Obadiah. Now, Obadiah was on his way. Suddenly, Elijah met him, and he recognized him, and he fell in his face and says, Is that you, my lord Elijah? And he answered to him, saying, It is I. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. Oh, we need that in the church. We need somebody to rise up and tell this generation, the church is here to speak to the powers of darkness. Remember what Paul said in Ephesians? That we, the church, are to make known to the powers and the principalities the manifold wisdom of God. We're to make it known. Not bow under the pressure. Not be pushed back into the corner. See, I love to study revivals. And I've said this many times. If you read or watch my videos on revival, you will find that when the church is backed against the wall, when it looks like it's all over for the church, somebody, there was always a remnant that stood up and said, the church is here in this hour. All the prophets are in hiding, terrified of Ahab and Elijah. There is so much control of the narrative. There's so much fear that the prophets and understand that Jezebel set her sight on those who could hear from heaven because she knew the thing that could do damage, the one thing that she could not control, the one thing that could destroy her kingdom was if people started hearing from the Lord. And so she's promoting a lie. She is presenting a false narrative. She is presenting that Elijah is the source of all their problems. I look at my internet browser. You know, I work a day job and I pull on this internet browser. And every day, 30 to 40 percent of all the articles are against Christians. How bad we are. We're the source of the problems. How Christians are fleeing Christianity. All these things to create and present a narrative so that Christianity is slowly being presented as the source of all problems and the thing that we need to address. Uh, you know, I just read a new article about the latest tactic is to go after homeschoolers. And it's because of Christians who are homeschooling their children and they're saying that they are brainwashing them. They are manipulating their children because why we want our children kept from an elitist agenda. We want to give them a truth so they can rise up and make real decisions. And an hour where they say, oh, they're controlling, but they're the very ones that they looked in the mirror are doing just like Elijah, sorry, uh, Ahab and Jezebel. They were the false ones. Elijah stands up and says, I am here. Go tell him. And we need that in this hour. Now, continuing on to verses 10 through 11, Obadiah responds and says, As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hurt, to hunt for you. Why then do you say, uh, and, and when they say he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here. They were everybody is searching for you. They're under oath. There's so much fear. And you want me to go tell the very person, the very source of authority, the one who controls all things, and say, Elijah is here? Now watch very carefully how Elijah responds in verse 15. 1 King 18, verse 15. Then Elijah says, As the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the hosts, 
of the army of heaven, okay, lives before whom I stand. There is the key. Before the Lord of hosts who lives, before whom I stand, I stand in his presence. I stand before him. And it's a face-to-face -face reality. He understood that, listen, I come under the authority of the Lord of hosts. You are speaking of that authority that's on the earth, but I represent a higher one. And I stand before him. See, the church has got to get a hold of this. Elijah would walk with that when that anointing would come upon him. And when that anointing, he understood, I'm standing in the presence of the Lord of the hosts of armies of heaven. And when he stood on that anointing, he was able to go to Mount Carmel and in that very place challenge all of the false prophets, challenge the very authorities of the hour, stand up and defeat them, call fire from heaven, because he stood in the presence of the Lord of hosts, and he knew it. The same man who walks with such authority that says, rain, stop, and it stops. Here's one word from Jezebel, and it would put him in so much fear that he flees, because when that anointing left, he was an ordinary man. And the church has walked as ordinary people because we've thought that we are like the Old Testament where we have an anointing and we've walked and when that anointing falls to minister, we are powerful. But when the anointing is gone for ministry, we think we're weak. But we're not like Elijah. Elijah walked in an Old Testament dispensation where the Spirit of God would come on him for purpose. The Spirit of God doesn't just come on you for purpose. The Spirit of God abides in you. He remains with you, and we have lost sight of that. And we stand in His presence all the time. We stand with this intimate connection and union with the Lord God all the time. And if we understood who He is, and as a consequence, who we are because we are in Him. And we don't walk based on feeling. We walk by faith because of His Word. And we stand on His Word, and His Word is faithful and true. And He watches over His Word to perform it. And He is fully committed. How do I know? Because Jesus went all the way to the cross. He never backed down. He never gave up one inch but went all the way and won an overwhelming defeat of the enemy. And we today are to so walk in such unity with him that when the enemy looks, the enemy can't tell, is that you or Jesus? Because you're so one with him. And it should put such a fear that we rise up and make known to the power, powers, the principalities, the manifold wisdom of God. I see a lot of people who make a whole lot of noise. They will sure say they're doing this and they're saying they're doing that. But until we walk wholly submitted in the secret place of His presence, in that place where we are broken and made, in that place where we know that we are His and we come under His authority, and as a consequence there's a holy fear in what we say, I don't want to add to or take away from what he says. I'm not looking to deliberately offend, but I will rather offend you than offend heaven. Because I walk bowed before him and I present myself every day. There were the church understood. They would come three times a day. They would come and seek his face. Not religiously, but they had disciplined themselves. They've been trained. And while I think we've got to get out of doing anything religiously, we do need to discipline ourselves to throughout the day get before Him so that we never lose sight of who we are in Him. Because that's only then that we're able to stand up and say, let it be known that Elijah is here. Let it be known that the church is here. In the presence of God we stand. 
and we know that God is in us and God is with us. God does not leave us, nor will He forsake us. He give us a word. You can say, I don't feel His presence. It's not whether you feel His presence or not. He is with you. Now, if there's some sin that has caused a hardening so that you've lost sight of the abiding a presence of living God with you and in you, then repent. If you're not aware of sin, then you just stand. You stand and you begin to seek His face. You begin to worship Him. You begin to honor Him and acknowledge Him as Lord. Now, as I continue, let me read that verse again. Then Elijah says, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to Him today. The church uh, should be like this. Elijah, when he walks under that anointing, it's a now thing because we serve a now God. And he says, now today I will present myself to him. Elijah understood who he was. When we stand up and we present ourselves to the world, it's who you are in Christ, not who you are in yourself. It's not who you are in the world. I'm not trying to convince the world the world does not validate who I am, the Lord God does. And I stand who I am in Christ. Whether the world accepts it or rejects it is not important. And it's not the title. It's not whether I'm an apostle or prophet. Or just, some may say, well, you just called to the helps ministry. We're all called the helps. It is being faithful in the purpose of God. When you are faithful in the purpose of God, you carry mighty authority. And if it's all simply a call to wash dishes, then do it faithfully and stand before the Lord because then you have such authority to be able to pray for your children, to pray regarding your finances, pray regarding things, and God will move. He's looking for those who understand because there's a promise. Listen, the Word says, if we pray according to His will, He hears us, and if He hears us, we have the answer. So we stand in the secret place, submitting ourselves under His authority. I am who you say I am. I cannot present myself to the world. I cannot present myself to the family. Can't present myself in any situation until I first present myself to Him in the secret place. And I know who He is and who He says I am. And He is taking you. He's taking this rough vessel this frail earthen vessel, and He is making you if you'll let Him. If you will yield, He will make you if you give Him the time. If you will allow every opinion and thought, if He changes it, it's okay. He is Lord. He is the Lord Almighty. He is the God Almighty. And in His presence I stand and I allow Him to take this vessel and make it. Transform it. And I submit to His authority. There's so many people. See, it's under whose authority you submit. It's so critical. And there's an authority in heaven. There's an authority on earth. And many people come and they submit to the wrong authorities. They're not going in the same vein. They don't believe the same things. And all they do is cause confusion and compromise. Many people start throwing. You see where in Galatians, Paul said, you've been running well. Who hindered you? Who deceived you? Whose voice captured you? Under what authority did you fall that caused you to compromise, that caused you to weaken your stance, that you lost sight and you did not get back into the work? It sees, listen, in the secret place of His presence, we have to walk with such a holy fear that I do not want to add to or take from His Word. His Word is absolute. And I humble myself to His Word. Whether I understand it or not, His Word comes first and final authority in my life. And I bow to that, not people's opinions of it, but the Word. And when I'm not sure, I'm telling you, I get before the Lord God, and I start to get back in the Word, not people's opinions. And if there's something I'm not fully sure, it's put on the shelf. And I say, God, you're going to reveal it to me. Because His Word carries absolute authority, especially in this hour, which is what He explains to the church of Revela- uh, Revelation, the church of Philadelphia. Because you've kept my Word. That's a word of endurance, perseverance, and all things. When the pressure's applied, 
when the pressure is applied such deception, manipulation, that wants you to quit and give up. I hold fast the word. I get in the secret place and I say, Holy Spirit, open it to me, reveal it to me. And I study it. I get my Greek, my Hebrew word study so that I can make sure I'm checking. I want to make sure the tenses I'm looking at from the Greek and the Hebrew. Some people are just, oh, I have to read it from the King James. I want to go further. I want to check the Greek and the Hebrew. I want to check the tenses. And I want to make sure I'm looking at it closely. And I'm walking in a light of revelation from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me and teach me. I take time. I go through this thing. And I chew it and I eat it. And I'm just nibbling it all the time. Holy Spirit, open it to me. Reveal it to me. Disturb me with truths. When he says something, I want to go check it. And I want to look at it. I want to pull on it. Okay, continue. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 10 through 11. I'm oh, sorry, I read that. Continue. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 17. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? You're the problem. If you expect to be received and welcomed by the world and the world system and the crony religious organizations, you've got another thing coming. Because we are to submit wholly to his authority and we are only received by him. You're not going to be received by the world. You're going to be hated. And there are unfortunately many people, religious churches and organizations, ministries, some are real genuine, but they have wrong thinking. You're not part of their club. They're going to reject you. And in this hour, we don't walk in offense. We walk humbly before the Lord God, seeking His face. We look for validation from the Lord. In chapter 18, 1 Kings Verses 18, 19. Then he answered, Elijah, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all of Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. Those whose voice you have listened to, those who've manipulated, controlled this hour, it's time for the church to stand up and be the voice that we're supposed to be in a humility. And it starts where we are broken in the secret place. There are many people that stand up with a boldness and all they are is noise. You have no voice until you're broken in the secret place of His presence and your words drip with the mercy. And the mercy of God has wrecked this vessel. You recognize who you were and what He did. That's where it comes back to this. I understand who He is and the deeper I press into the secret place of His presence, the more I recognize who He is and how far I fell. And then I recognize the depth of His mercy towards me. And I am broken by that. And I begin to see and think out of His mercy, out of the blood. I see a people out of that mercy. And before I even present them, there's so much time on my knees. Cry out to God. Have mercy for them. You had mercy on me. Spare your people. Have mercy on that person. Oh God, open their eyes to see. Open their ears to hear. And God, show me how to reach them. I want to walk in obedience to you. If I'm not the voice to speak into their lives, Father, would you send the right person at the right time with the right word? I want to walk in holy, complete obedience in this hour. And I arise and shine by who I am in you. See, when I stand with that, I'm able to pray effectively for those I love and to stand in the gap for them because I recognize who He is and who I am. And I don't want to overstep my boundaries. There's a holy fear in me. I'm not trying to put on a show for people. 
I want to make sure that I stand before him and he says, well done. It's the only voice that matters, especially in this hour. And when I go forth, I want to do what he tells me to do. So I present myself continuously in the secret place. God, I'm here. Romans 12. I stand before you and I present myself. I want to be found well pleasing unto you. I am a co-worker under you. Holy Spirit, lead me. Let me not go down the paths that I think I should go down, but stay on the paths that you've ordained for me. And let me walk with a boldness, not with a fear of the world. Father God, not seeking to stir things up, walking with wisdom, walking with words salted with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Walking, Father God, effectively, led by your mighty Holy Spirit, so that in this hour, like you, Jesus, I am a witness everywhere I go. I want to carry the tangible presence of God. I want to walk in the authority of heaven. And it starts because the more effective and more authority you want to walk in, the lower you must come in the secret place and humble yourself and come under his authority. And the more I walk under his authority, the more I walk effectively with his authority. The more I'm going to stand up and challenge the Ahabs and the Jezebels. And to stay so that when there's a counterattack, see Elijah was strong, but when the counterattack came, he had to run. And we must stand even with the counterattacks. Even when Jezebel comes back, because we know who we are. And we're able to stand up and keep pushing this kingdom forward. Because listen, we may be living in the last days. <clears throat> I may see all these signs and everything else occurring. But the end doesn't come until the gospel is preached. Until the Lord Jesus says so. He is the final authority, the final voice. Not the enemy. Not the signs. None of those things. Jesus. And it's only when he says that we're done. And we are called to occupy until he comes. And that means to be bold and run your race. But I don't have any openings. There's some, remember what he said to the church of Philadelphia. I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. When you recognize who he is and his authority, then you understand that whatever door he opens, no one can shut. I don't care who they are, what authority they have. When he opens a door, no man can shut. And whatever door he shuts, no one's opening. So I want to stay under his authority. He called us for this hour. He has anointed and appointed us. So let us run our race. Let us recognize and let us stand up and say to this hour, to the powers and principalities, the church is here. And we're presenting ourselves this day, today. And we make it known that Jesus is Lord. We make it known that Jesus is on the throne. And we claim souls. We claim backsliders. Amen. Oh, I pray this message has provoked you and encouraged you now more than ever. You found hidden in the secret place of his presence and to be made by him and to understand who you are in him. If it has, I would ask in the name of Jesus, would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments? Because as you do in this hour, you help us to boldly stand and declare that Jesus is Lord and reach more people. And I thank you for that. I remind you that this is the day of salvation. And this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad because of Him, through Him, and for Him. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you.